Welcome to Real Truth Real Quick. I'm a five with a four wing, joined as always by my eight with a seven wing. I have no idea what that means, but hello, friends. <laughs> All right, Todd. So today we're going to talk about, those are the numbers for the Enneagram. Okay. And so this is a question that has been uh, submitted quite a few times. So the question today is this, is the Enneagram, is it helpful, harmless, or is it heresy? Yeah, well... Um, it probably depends on what you're going to do with it, right? I mean, I know sometimes people watch Real Truth real quick. What we're trying to do is talk about life, leadership, and the world we live in from a biblical perspective. And so I'm really glad people care because who wants to mess with something that's going to hurt you yeah. uh, or be harmful or, or, or be heretical? So let me just explain, honestly, what the word heresy means. The word heresy is a word that's used a lot. It means just to choose. And probably what's implied is to choose wrongly. And most things, there's the potential for them to be misused, even things that are gifts from God. And so let's just agree. Uh, I've got six kids. Adam, you? I've got two. You got two. And um, I think you found with your two that God makes every child a little different, yeah. right? I've got six kids, and every single one of them, I can see that there's something stamped on their personage, their soul, that is just different than their brothers or sisters. They come from the same mom, same dad. Uh, they're both all made in the, in the image of God, but there's something different about every one of my children. And um, I think it's important, like sometimes in a way that people are more comfortable with, we've talked about the bent of each child, yeah. you know, how God has uniquely made them. And, and a phrase that we use around here a lot is that you should know who you are, like who you are, and be who you are. And the fact that people want to know who they are, it makes a tremendous amount of sense. So there's, there's uh, the Myers-Briggs, right? There's the Taylor Johnson test. There is, you know, our, uh, which Winnie the Pooh character are you? <laughs> there's, are you a golden retriever, a yeah. beaver, a lion, or an otter? I mean, we could go on and on and on and on. And then there's this thing called the Enneagram, which has this mystical name that I think has kind of caught the wonder of the world. Yeah, it sounds like it's from a Dan Brown novel or something like that. <laughs> it does, right? So let's just talk about what Enneagram means. Ennea is the Greek word for nine, nine, and gram is to write. And so there's this symbol, this nine-sided symbol. And I think part of the reason some people are really um, intrigued by it is it has this illusion to be something uh, powerful and mystical that some sage in the past has figured out. In fact, if you go and look and Google the word Enneagram, you'll see there's a spike in its usage starting in the 1980s, really, really getting more pronounced in the 2000s, to where now it's very, very much a part of our world and the way that we use it, okay? So, but it does sound a little sinister. Enneagram sounds like a pentagram, right? And when you think of a pentagram, what do you think of? Satan, evil. Okay, yeah. But what's so interesting about that is, let me just throw this in there real quick, and we're going to answer the question. But like a pentagram, it was often used by Christians in the early world to talk about the five wounds of Christ. It's also the symbol of the gold. Anton LaVey made it later a symbol of evil in modern-day occultism. So it depends on what you do with it. The Moroccans and the Ethiopians put the pentagram on their flag, and I don't think that they would say they did it because they're satanic or evil or necessarily are trying to say that they want the entire country focused on the, uh, the five wounds of Christ, right? right? So, you know, symbols are symbols, right? But the, but the Enneagram, um, you know, I, the Scripture says this. It says that um, the fool does not delight in understanding but only in revealing his own mind. That's Proverbs 18, 2. Um, the scriptures encourage husbands in 1 Peter 3 to live with their wives in an understanding way. Why? Because um, we're, we're, we're to make sure that we don't impose upon people the way we're wired. And certainly, men and women, this is a bit of a controversy now, you know, uh, are, are in our own gender makeup have different bents just between the male and female gender. Uh, I think there's been even a lot of confusion. I want to just insert this right here, Adam, that there are certain guys who on the male spectrum yeah. are more sensitive guys. They're not rough and tumble guys. That doesn't mean they're not male, yeah. right? And women, some women are more tomboyish, more on the male side than they are on the female side of kind of that sweet and uh, compassionate side of, uh, of femininity. But that doesn't mean they're not women on either side. And there's so much confusion here. What it's saying is make sure you love and understand one another, everybody. Yeah, every one of my six kids are fearfully and wonderfully made to use the words of the psalmist in Psalm 139. And God made every one of us, and he loves us and knows us very well. And so I think sometimes people can overplay the Enneagram or the Myers-Briggs, okay? I'll just go back a little bit more to the Enneagram history. Um, there, there's one guy who was, uh, you know, in the 1920s, he was in some Afghanistanian monastery my understanding is when he stumbled across the nine writings, right? The nine-figured graph. And he built something off that, and later on it was picked up. 
And uh, it's got roots in some people would say Sufism, which is mystical Islam. And some would say it's in Kabbalahism, which is mystical Judaism. Okay, and I could go on and on and on and on. But bottom line, it looks to me like somebody who's fairly creative and is observant of human nature yeah. just sat down and goes, hey, here's just nine different personality types. There's nothing sacred about that. You and I might sit down and come up with three, or we might come up with 17, yeah. depending on how creative we wanted to get. But look, if I want to love you well, I want to understand you. So um, something that Christians have found very helpful and I think are very comfortable talking about with are the five love languages, Yeah. right? And a, a lot of times when I'm trying to show um, somebody how to love them, I typically love them the way I like to be loved, okay? What's interesting is that Jesus does give us this encouragement. He says that we are to do unto others we want them to do unto us, okay? And so I think sometimes if we're not wise, I can want somebody to love me the way if I was them, I'd want to be loved. But that's not what Jesus is saying. He's saying, understand them. Know what makes them feel loved, okay? And so if, for instance, in the five love languages, uh, one of them is gifts, another one is acts of service, one's words of encouragement. And if I like words of encouragement, but you like gifts, if I just encourage you, okay, and I never learn you enough to go that, hey, a way to really love Adam is to give him gifts, but I'm loving you the way I want you to love me, it means I haven't taken time to really know you. I'm not even fulfilling Jesus' command. And so I want to understand what motivates and blesses my brother. Hey, the Enneagram can be helpful yeah. to understand. Would you say you were a five with a four wing? Five with a four wing. Okay, yeah. so I have to figure out what that means. What are you trying to communicate to me when you say that so that I can go, hey, this is the unique bent. This is the way God seems to have imprinted on Adam. Yeah. Um, something that is true and is there and all observable and all loving people would say is true of you. Um, if I want to love you well, I would do that. But I think where it becomes harmful uh, and maybe even heretical, it's heretical when I elevate it to the point of doctrine yeah. and certain truth. It's just observable psychological science, yeah. okay? But I, uh, I actually I give you credit. You know, we were talking about this a while back, and I heard you say to me, "Hey, people don't do things because they're six; they do things." You said because they're because of sin, yeah, or, because, or the spirit, or the spirit. Yeah. That's right. So I think it's a mistake and becomes harmful when you say, "Well, you're just a six, yeah, right?" Because I say that because this is what Jesus wants. All right, in in, in Romans eight twenty nine, it says, "For those whom He foreknew, God predestined." to become conformed, it says, not into the Enneagram personality that he predestined them to be, but it says that God wants all of us, ones, eights with a seven wing, if that's what you say that I am, uh, he wants me to be conformed into the image of his son, that Jesus might be the firstborn of many brethren. I can't hide behind the fact that I have a bent because what God says he wants me to do is to submit to his spirit and become more and more like Jesus. So I always love to ask people, you know, on, on what was Jesus? And the answer is he was exactly what he was supposed to be at every single moment. That's what I want to be. It's why we kind of tease that let's not have a WWJD bracelet, what would Jesus do? Because Jesus was God, always submissive to his spirit in, in a way that brought God glory. Clearly, God made you and I differently. Um, but both of us should be completely submitted to God all the time, be filled with the spirit, be continually being controlled by the spirit. Listen to that real truth real quick. What's it mean to be a spirit-filled person or be filled with the Holy Spirit? But what I want to always do is make sure that what Jesus would have me do in any given moment is what Jesus would have me do. Much, much more than trying to figure out what would Jesus have Adam do. Yeah. And if we do what Jesus wants because we're submitted to him, then it's going to be glorious wherever we are on the Enneagram chart. Todd, thank you so much. A lot of great show notes to check out. Be sure to click on that link. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll talk to you again next time. <laughs>